Mm-hmm. So I'm, <laughs> I'm going to use like an analogy with food. Okay. Okay. So I was eating eggs and toast this morning. Mm-hmm. And I was sitting next to my two-year-old. And she wanted a bite of my eggs. And I said, sure, honey, take a bite of my eggs. And then I asked her, can I have a bite of her, your eggs? And she said, no. <laughs> <laughs> These are my eggs, daddy. <laughs> and I was like, how is that fair? <laughs> is that, I mean, I realize that it's like really apples and oranges and night and day to, compared to what you're talking yeah. about. But is that the general sentiment that you're letting it's... these people in <laughs> and they're not letting, and they're pushing you out? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's do this. All right. Hey. <laughs> so am I calling you Melina? Is that right? Yeah, that's my name. That's my real name and Twitch name and everything. Okay. Oh, so you yeah. stream on Twitch. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Um, yes. So t- how are you handling COVID? Um, right now I'm in Sweden and I'm uh, stuck here. Okay. I'm separated from my fiance. Okay. Who's Destiny. If oh, you okay. If you about that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that kind of sucks, but it's... It's okay. What about you? Uh, yeah, so I am not quarantined from my partner. We are together. Nice. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'm actually with my family. We moved from Boston to Texas, actually, for uh, oh. the duration of COVID. Um, mm-hmm. Because we have a relatively small place in Boston. And I mm-hmm. have two young children. And so they need a place to run around. So we came down here That's for a little cool. while. Um, mm-hmm. So it's been... What a great start. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's been interesting because, <laughs> you know, we had to ship down some stuff and most of our stuff is still up there and things like that. But mm-hmm. um, so, I, like, I understand the topic today is like trust issues. Can you help me understand what that means? Um, so I would say, especially since I got, and I'm not sure if it's because I'm getting like older or if it's because I've been on the Internet more or if it's because I've been traveling like outside of Sweden or if it's because I've been in America a lot, I feel like a lot of people lately has been like disappointing me. And it feels like I've met like a lot of people that is like, it's always like turned out really dramatic or I felt like they've like become really mean basically. And it just makes me feel like, um, like it's like hard for me to like trust people. Okay. And I'm not sure if it's because I've been like naive in the past or if it's like, sure. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It can be hard mm-hmm. if like people, um, you know, if you give someone your trust and then they don't, you know, treat it well and they hurt you in some way or, or it can be hard to trust people mm-hmm. if you kind of get like betrayed, you know, when you trust someone. Yeah. And it, it feels like it's been like happening, like almost like, if, like a, like a lot, like, oh, interesting. yeah, lately. Yeah. Like in like just a year, it's been like a lot of really like dramatic events and stuff wow that sounds and... rough <laughs> yeah i don't know it's i'm i'm very like surprised and it's i remember a few months ago i felt like um like it made me like sad and especially mm. like scared to like meet new people and stuff oh interesting so you found yourself yeah. kind of pulling back a little bit because of, of what had happened mm-hmm. and can you tell me a little bit about um what what happened over the last year you said like a several events what do you mean by that yeah um and if there's anything you're not comfortable sharing just let me know i'm i'm just i I don't yeah i don't think it's it would be like good to like talk about like very very like specific things um because there's like people that maybe don't want that information to like come out like fully but there's it has been out like the information is like out there for sure but i used i used to feel like i think something that was like really good about me was that um, I used to like see a lot of positivity, like the positivity and stuff in people. And now I feel like I don't do that as much anymore. And it's kind of sad, I don't know. How does feel it feel like to like... not see positivity in people anymore? Um, it's, um, hmm. I, I just feel a bit scared. It's almost like, it, it almost feels a bit trippy. I don't know. It's, it's like, it's just like so much. It's just like intense. I don't know. Hmm. What's intense about it? Um, like it feels almost like a bit unreal. Huh. Okay. <laughs> There's like been like so many, I don't know. 
So does it feel unreal because it's very different from the way that you've seen people before? So you're kind of like looking at like the world seems like a different place to you? Or is it, is that what you mean? I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm trying to understand it, it feels, yeah. what's unreal about that. Um, I'm not sure. If, may, maybe it was like that before, but I just couldn't really realize it. But I see. So the, the issue is like, and this kind of goes back to earlier, you were kind of saying like, you were wondering now whether you were naive before or, I mean, do you believe you were naive before what you are now? Like, that's what I've been told by people. <laughs> so I don't know. That's what it feels like people tell huh. me like, yeah, this is just like how the world is sort of. Uh, but it just like kind of sucks because I really feel like I mean well to a lot of people. And I would, I would say that I'm pretty like genuine and like very generous. Yeah. To a lot of people and stuff, especially like with the kind of relationship that me and my fiance has and everything too. What kind of relationship do you and your fiance um, have? What does that we mean? We have an open relationship. And help. I mean, so I have a, I have an idea of what that means. What What do you mean? Can you help me understand what that means? <laughs> like, um, like we're we're able to like see people, um, both romantically and sexually. Like outside okay. of ourselves, basically, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and and your relationship with Des, you say he's your fiance. Mm hmm And so you guys have a romantic relationship. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you help me understand a little bit about? Um, is that something that you're interested in talking about today, or do you want to talk kind of more about trust and other people? I think everything just like goes like. Okay. Sure. Direction, sort of, I don't know. <laughs> so, so tell me a little. Can you just tell me a little bit about your relationship with Destiny? Like how you guys met and. Um, we met. So I was a fan of him. Okay. Like, what is it? Two years ago, I okay. think I started watching it on YouTube. So I didn't know what Twitch was, and then um, I, yeah, I I found out that he had Instagram, so I texted him there, and then we started chatting, and then he, uh, I was in New Zealand at the time, traveling around like in a van, just like living life, being very happy. Probably like, yeah, like one of the most like happiest times I've ever had. Um, yeah, Can and then you tell flew... me about that time. Um, so, so like five years ago, I went to New Zealand with my mom and my two sisters, and we went there because I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. <laughs> so yeah, we went there, and when I got there, I felt like um, I felt like that's like where I'm supposed to be. Wow. So I saved up a lot of money for about three, four years. Uh, still when I was in high school and then after high school, I worked a lot to, to like get over there. And my whole plan was basically to like go there and uh, like start a life basically because I want, in, really wanted to move there. In New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And how old are you now? I'm 21. I'm 22 oh. in the summer. 21 and 22. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm 22 this summer. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and and so you had this idea to move to New Zealand when you were like eighteen. Um, no, like sixteen. Sixteen, okay. Yeah, sixteen. Or so something. then you yeah, saved so. up money for three or four years, mm -hmm. and then then what happened? I, I went there. Um, we bought a car or like a van, and we lived in that one basically, and just like traveled around. Who's I really me? like traveling. I'm really into traveling. Uh, me and uh, my um, partner at the time, Max. Okay. So you guys traveled around New Zealand and that was one of the happiest times of your life? Mm-hmm. What was happy about it? Tell me about it. It's, um, sounds cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very much of a person that really, li I really like traveling and I really like, I don't know, the people there are very nice very like open and like genuine and like happy and adventurous and mm. everyone just likes to like do fun things and create fun memories mm. and i would say that i'm like that kind of person as well mm. i've never really felt like i belong in sweden where i come from mm. um i don't i've never really felt like i fit in what so what, when I got there, what about feeding sweden hasn't fit with you um i think it's it's just like I I've never really felt like I'm not sure if it's because of like if my I don't know I would say that I sort of grew up with the idea of that Sweden wasn't really the place for me to be and I'm not sure if it has to do with has that been a feeling that you've had you just kind of always mm -hmm. known that yeah hmm. yeah cool because I was a kid like very young yeah <laughs> so I was just like planning to like go there and everything and that was super fun 
and then uh, uh, Steven came down, and that was really really good. Who, and then yeah, who's Steven? Destiny. Destiny. So you you were you were traveling in New Zealand, mm -hmm. and and Destiny came to visit you. Yeah. Oh wow! So is that the first mm -hmm. time y'all had met? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're making that sound so matter of fact, but I think it's quite remarkable. Is that? Yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of like unbelievable. <laughs> like yeah. that you that you yeah that I found him, like and started like watch his like content and stuff, and then I got in contact with him, and then. Yeah, he flew all the way down there, and that was really good. And we got along really well. And then we continued talking, and then I just like flew over to him. And then we like been traveling around together and like doing stuff. Okay. And mm -hmm. so you said you were traveling in New Zealand with your partner at the time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when Destiny came to visit you, you guys were friends, or was was there a kind of a romantic element to the relationship at that um, time? Um. So. Uh, this person that I was together with back then, he and I, we were together for about four years. Um, and we had a polyamorous relationship, which meant that we could like date multiple people at the same time. Okay. And we decided that... Hmm? Oh, sorry, what's the difference between polyamorous and open, or is there one? Um, I would guess that polyamorous means more um, that you can like have feelings for multiple people at the same time and stuff, and you can like date them. Okay. What you think is like dating, I guess. Like, I think the labels are like bad i just think it's like i'm very like uh, <laughs> okay sure and and what um so but i'm just trying to understand when you use the word open relationship and you use the word polyamorous are those the same thing or are those different i would say that we maybe use open now because we're not like living with like a third person or like dating another person at the moment okay so it's just like we're dating each other we're not dating anyone else but like whenever we go to see people we could like have feelings and stuff for them as well or like have some sort of romantic relationship with them but we're not like l like living with them because okay. i think both of us would see living with someone it's like more of a dating thing for us so okay so so like 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 a polyamorous relationship people sometimes like live together with like multiple partners yeah i think yeah. they can do that if they want to <laughs> sure i think it's just like it's very non-monogamous that's Maybe that's like a better word for it. A non-monogamous relationship. Non-monogamous relationship. So, so an open relationship is a little bit more like primarily monogamous, but open. Is that? Yeah, I, I guess. I, I would say maybe like non-monogamous is the right word to use. I, I don't know. It's just words. Okay. <laughs> but like, we, we're, yeah, we can see multiple people at the same, like, yeah, at okay. the same time. And yeah. Um, and so, okay, so you, you started, so, but you guys were, when Destiny came to visit, you guys were friends, or was there, like, a romantic element to that? No, I didn't see anything romantic. Okay. <laughs> I thought you started, like, it was a funny thing. But we, like, we texted and stuff, and it was fun. And, yeah, how, we how, opened how up How did you understand why he was coming to visit you? Um, like, why he did that? Yeah. He probably thought it was, like, a fun idea, and I think he needed a break. Like I from see. streaming and like from, yeah, like everything in his life at the moment. And he lives somewhere in North America, right? He lives in California. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you thought that he was coming to see you because he kind of needed a break to recharge and, and... Yeah, and I thought it was like fun. <laughs> yeah, certainly. It sounds yeah, like, like a Yeah, like New Zealand is a very nice place. It's like, it's like a great loca like location yeah. to go to if you need a vacation. How yeah, long was so he, he down there? Uh, for about two weeks. Okay. So it sounds like you guys yeah. had a lot of a lot of fun. It sounds great. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. We did like adventure stuff and like um, saw beautiful things like mountains and like just like really really fun. I'm very adventurous. I like planning like adventurous stuff and stuff like cool. that. Cool. So yeah. that's what we did. Yeah. You strike me as somewhat of a free spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. I'm like I'm very um I like to travel. I'm like very. I have a lot of love to give mm -hmm. and I see receive that. or whatever. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's, I feel like I figure out like what the meaning of like my life is sort mm -hmm. of, it's just that, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, it just gets me sad when I see people like being like, I don't know, you know, like about the trust thing or whatever. Yeah. So I, I, Melina, I mean, I'm mm -hmm. honestly a little bit confused because I, I really don't understand what you mean by that. Cause I don't, you know, you're saying that. And we don't have to talk about it because you mentioned that you kind of don't mm -hmm. want to mention it, but I'm confused by what you mean by that. Oh, okay. Right. So like, w l let me just tell you what I heard. So, so I'm envisioning, you know, Melina traveling around New Zealand, 
um, being very adventurous, free spirit, never really tied to Sweden. And, mm-hmm. and that's kind of who you are. And I'm, I see that person and I understand where she's coming from. And I feel like I know her a little bit. And then something mm-hmm. changes. And I can see how like that person could change a little bit if, if she gave her trust too easily or too freely or maybe people took advantage or something like that. I'm not so sure that I quite see it that way because I think you're a giver. Like I think Wait, what just, are you, who are you talking about? Or... I'm talking about you. I think you're a giver. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, and I, I think would, that yeah, it, would even like probably call me a fixer. Like I, I like, I like like give and like make people happy around me. Yeah, so you know it's mm-hmm. interesting. Fixer has such a negative connotation to it, right? Yeah, maybe yeah. Um, <laughs> but I don't. I'm not sure if it's like a good thing. I don't think you probably you probably can't fix anyone. I don't know about or that. Or I thought so in the past, but now I feel like I, maybe I can't. Can I tell you something completely random and unrelated to what we're talking about? Um, mm-hmm. Any interest in religion or spirituality? Psychedelics. Okay. So i just like to share with you like a concept from the Hindu tradition that I think actually kind of describes you pretty well. I'm not saying that it's not really religion. It's just a mm-hmm. way of conceptualizing people. So Mm -hmm. when I look at you, what I see is something called Shakti. Shakti is the Sanskrit word for energy. And the interesting thing in um, the Sanskrit language is that energy is a feminine word. So the Mm -hmm. idea of energy actually has like a feminine connotation to it. And it's sort of like kind of a, I mean, this is going to sound, yeah, it's kind of weird. So like energy is just sort of a feminine word. And, and this could be my, you know, very much a bias of the culture that I was raised in or studying some of these things. But I feel like I've met some women who were just givers and seem to almost give out their energy to other people. And I've also noticed that. So the other thing about Shakti is it's sort of like a maternal kind of energy or it can be. And this may have something to do with, you know, primitive cultures and when they think about creating life like that is like a very energy intensive process and it's like the woman who creates life so it's been a lot of academic study around like you know five thousand years ago when people were living in india they sort of felt like energy is a feminine quality um which is a little bit different in western culture and so sometimes i meet people who i think have shakti so shakti also is the word it's the word for energy it's also the word for goddess and so that that like there are some kind of maternal or or maternal figures that sort of give energy out to other people and you strike me as one of those people who sort of gives of themselves to other people and then like and and kind of there's this idea that like all energy in the universe comes from the goddess it's not actually doesn't come from a god it comes from uh, the feminine version of god um And just listening to you and talking to you and even looking at you, I sort of, that word Shakti comes to mind because you seem to me to be a very energetic and giving person. And other people, I would guess, so people who I've met who seem to have a Shakti like yours, I'd say that you're almost like a light that people are attracted to. And it's like they're drawn to you because you give so freely. And then people who are kind of hungry come and want a piece of your energy and you give it so freely freely to them and they live in a world where energy is not freely given and so it can be very very intoxicating for them to like be in your presence because you so you are open in a world where most people have trust issues Mm -hmm. does that make sense at all yeah does that fit at all with kind of your experience about people kind of coming to you to take your radiance for lack of a better term? Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me in what way it fits with you? Like what resonates about that? Um, I feel like, like in situations, for example, when if I've had like a really close relationship with someone and it's like really good and really fun and they feel like they get like help from me and stuff and I like like doing that with them and I like to like make them happy and stuff. It's really like it happens a lot that something happens that makes them do something really mean or like hurtful towards me. And then a time goes by and they come back later and mm. it feels really weird. Yeah. 
I don't know. It feels really strange. That's that's a very that's a great <laughs> description. So I think that's kind of what yeah. I I envision that almost like a mother, right? A mother is someone that you have a conflict with, but then like you always kind of go back. Mm-hmm. Does that sort of make sense? Like it's almost like that kind of psychological. Yeah, maybe. And it's just it's, if you, it feels like I'm getting used a lot yeah. somehow. So so it sounds like the relationship is lopsided. So one of the hard things, unfortunately, for people who have this shakti is that their relationships often become one-sided. And oddly enough, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing once you understand it. Like once mm-hmm. you understand that you have something to give. Anyway, we'll, we'll maybe get there. Maybe we won't. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But can you give me an example? Because I'm, I'm still having trouble sort of envisioning. Like, can you give me an example of this happening? Um... I think it's like the people that I get interested in, like romantically, not okay. at the, like at the time now, but like it ha- it's happened in the past and stuff. Then there's also like friends. Um, this is something that people just like generally know, but like because of all the drama that's happened, like between me and Steven and like other people that gets involved with like us romantically or like sexually, whatever, there's been a lot of people um, getting really jealous, probably and turn out like being really mean or trying to like sabotage and stuff and that feels really shitty because i feel very generous and i've never done anything to them like that's bad or can can you give me an example of sabotage what does that mean like trying to make me feel bad how do they try to make you feel bad they try to make me feel jealous how do they do that um like, well, gosh, now I feel like, wait, um, just like being really mean and stuff or like try to make me feel bad that they had some sort of romantic or sexually relationship with my partner, basically, by saying mean things or try to like Can tell get- me that they're sort of like the one instead of me or something like that, basically. So when someone says they're the one instead of you. Or like they're not saying it, but they mean, like they mean it by their actions and stuff. And they how do turn they mean that? It. So l- let, me, um, let me tell you, can I explain mm-hmm. why I'm asking you such specific questions? Mm-hmm. So you're saying that people, you're talking about your experience of people's actions, mm-hmm. right? You're saying they try to make me feel bad. They try to make me feel jealous. Whereas in my experience, oftentimes people don't try to make someone feel a certain way. Usually when people make other people feel bad, that's like a con, like it's not the intended consequence. It's like uh, almost like collateral damage. Mm -hmm. So for example, let's say that I had a relationship with Destiny and I felt like I was in love with him. I may make you feel like I'm the one, or I I may make you feel like I think I'm the one, but that's not because I'm trying to make you feel a certain way. It's because I want destiny all to myself. Does that make sense? And so I could understand how you would feel that way, but I don't necessarily know that they're intending to make you feel that way. Like I've had girls basically like shutting like the door in front of me with like that person and him in the room, like like clinging on him and stuff and like looking me in the eyes and like shutting the door in front of me and to like make me feel (laughs) how does that make you feel like i i just don't understand like why what have i done like i so okay so why i really like this sort of relationship and i know there's a lot of people like memeing and stuff on the internet that i'm the one getting all of this like like yeah, the extra out of the relationship or whatever. Like, I'm the only one who's getting to see people and stuff. A lot of people think that. Um, but, like... Wait, what was I even going with this? Um, so you were telling me that someone shut the door in your face. And I'm... Like, someone... <laughs> you There's a ro- physical room where Destiny's in it. And there's another person in it. And they shut yeah. the door in your face. Oh, yeah. So, I mean... I think the most... Like, the, the best thing about this kind of relationship for me is that... I make it possible for my partner that I love to like experience multiple things in life and not just me you understand for the sure. rest of her or his life or whatever right. and and I also feel like 
I, I really do love him so much. And it makes me happy thinking that he can, like, give that happiness to other people as well. So when people start, like, being really mean and stuff, and, like, they start drama and stuff, and they, they absolutely don't have to, it makes me really sad. Why don't they have to start drama? Because I think they, like, probably, hopefully get what they, like, can or want. Like, I hope they know that what they can get out of it, you know? Yeah, but what if they, what they want is exclusivity? Then I guess it's I guess it's on them. I don't know. I don't think it's like it, it doesn't have to like be on me, right? Or like him. Right. Or I like I, him. I completely agree with you. So I'm just so yeah. I'm gonna put myself in the shoes of the person who closes the door in your face mm-hmm. for a moment, right? So I'm imagining if I want exclusivity with Destiny, then it's on me to try to get it, and part of that involves closing the door in your face, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And. What are you feeling right now? You look like you're getting a little bit emotional. I'm sorry. Did I? <laughs> no, it's okay. I'm curious what you're feeling. Mm. It's, I think it's just really unfair. What's unfair about it? It, it does seem unfair to me too. It sounds to me like you're being open, but the other people that you invite into your relationship are not being as open as you are. Is that no. what feels unfair about it? Yeah. Because I don't know. I, I don't really know. Like, I guess like... That just makes me feel like I'm losing hope in people around me. I don't know. Because I just want everyone to like be happy around me. It feels like everything gets really complicated. I don't know. Or, I don't know. Or when, when, they, when they do that, it's just really unfair. What's unfair about it? Um, because I feel like I'm just like giving them a lot of like happiness. It's also the other way around. They could be, they could be like people getting jealous of him as well, like because they want to be with me, and I'm like, I, I can, like even though, like I give them almost like all I can. I don't know. It just, it just feels like, I don't know. It's, I don't get it. Yeah, let me see if I, I understand it's just you. Really unfair. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's really, it's really like complicated. It's just like a lot, but what, what's complicated <laughs> about it? Um, it seems like it's hard for you to understand, or like not understand, but like it's hard to like explain maybe. Yeah, so l- let me see if I understand. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use like an analogy with food, okay? Okay. So I was eating eggs and toast this morning, mm-hmm. and I was sitting next to my two-year-old, and she wanted a bite of my eggs, and I said, sure, honey, take a bite of my eggs. And then I asked her, can I have a bite of her- your eggs? And she said, No. <laughs> these are my eggs daddy <laughs> and I was like how is that fair <laughs> is that I mean I realize that it's like really apples and oranges and night and day to, compared to what you're talking yeah. about but is that the general sentiment that you're letting it's... these people in and they're not letting and they're pushing you out mm-hmm. like you're letting yeah. this person into uh, presumably your home I don't know exactly if it's your home or you know because you say that Destiny's your fiance Mm-hmm. Um, but, and so I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, I'm confused about the logistics of like, who's living where and, you know, where are you? And is that your I'm, home? And- I'm like, I live in Sweden, so I'm only like visiting him. I I've been visiting him so there's like, there's someone who shuts the door in your face. And in a sense, I, I mean, I guess I have a certain possessiveness when you use the word fiance. Like, I feel like you have dibs, you have the first right to destiny. If you let someone <laughs> else in, maybe that's wrong. That. Maybe that, that's not... You know, I don't know it, if I say boyfriend, it's not really boyfriend. That seems kind of, but partner, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's just words to me. Yeah. But I mean, I'm wondering like, who's got dibs, right? Like, d- does it, do you get like, so you're the one who, is that like, if you're, if you're in a relationship with someone who's your fiance, like you sort of, you know, let other people into your relationship, right? Mm-hmm. But it's still you letting them in. They don't have a right to come in. It's like you, you're choosing to open the door. And they're, you're letting them walk in if they want to, but it's still your door to open or close. 
I guess like the only boundary basically that I have in or like the boundary that we have is that if there's someone that we're interested in or like doing some romantic or sexual thing with if they don't respect our relationship or um or try to like sabotage it or whatever or doesn't like hates the other one like that's like the boundary basically and it feels like everything is going well until there's like some point it doesn't and it's and then I feel like I've just like I don't know it's just really I think it's really sad what's sad about it because I I used to have like a lot of hope for uh, for people to just I don't know I think it's like a beautiful thing that there's not really like any I don't see love as some sort of control when it comes to relationships basically I think that's really for me that's strange and so if, if love isn't control what's hurtful about someone closing the door in your face what makes it hard for you to just appreciate that they're you know that that person and destiny are about to share something beautiful why is that hurtful to you it's not like that it's just more it, i don't think i don't think he thinks that because like that person is not really respecting us by being mean to one another like to any of us basically so it's not it, like they're that person is not respecting you guys I wouldn't say so if one of the, like, if that person starts to, like, get really mean and stuff or try to... But is closing the door in your face, is that mean? I would say so. Okay. To, like, try to make me feel bad. Try to make you feel bad. Yeah. Why do you think they're trying to make you feel bad? Because they probably want him for themselves. But how, but see, in my mind, those are two different things, Melina. Mm-hmm. So, so maybe this is, so I'd like to clarify this. In my mind, like, let's say there's a pancake. Mm-hmm. And just because I want to eat the pancake doesn't mean I want to take the pancake away from someone else. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? So, so in, in, in my mind, you're kind of, just because somebody wants destiny doesn't mean that they want to hurt you. Like they get mean in other ways as well like one of them made fun of me for being swedish because they wanted me to feel like shit like <laughs> why do you think they want or, to hurt you because they they probably wants to be in my position and what is your position like the person that lives with them and sees them every single day so it's, and gets to like spend my life with them in that way Okay. That makes sense to me. So it sounds mm-hmm. like they're jealous. Yeah. And so let me just take a step back. So it sounds like I feel like I'm getting it now. So thank you so much for explaining. Let me see okay. if I get it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have this kind of, um, you know, view that relationship. So you love destiny and destiny loves you. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that you guys have this open relationship and you think it's a beautiful thing to be able to love and to be loved. And you think that it's, uh, you know, beautiful to share that love and for other people to experience destiny's love because you've experienced it as well. And it's a wonderful thing and you want to share that. So you're kind of, you're inviting everyone to the table and let's all eat (laughs) together. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's like, what I, that's like the dream picture. That's what I yeah, want. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so everyone kind of brings, it's like a potluck. So everyone brings something and then we all share what we all have to bring. Yeah. <laughs> and so you also have this idea that like other people can come to the table and share in the way that you do. And yeah, you and it works, it works sometimes, but it feels like most of the times things has gone like really bad and like really horrible. Really so. bad and really horrible. I would say so, or like, it's been like, it's been, I would say it's horrible because I feel, I feel like, um, I feel like tired or I feel like bad and it feels like it's like really like affecting me pretty hard. What feels bad? Like the, the way I start to view people around me starts to become really negative. And every time there's like a new person coming in. I get really scared instead of like being happy as I used to be. Yeah. And what and that, th- what do you think about that? Why do you think you're starting to do I that? I think it's really because I feel like I've gotten like disappointed so much, so uh-huh. many times. So I, I start to like feel really scared. 
and that's of bad. like more things happening again. Yeah. And do you are you, and are you afraid that at some point you're going to have to change the way that you view people? Yeah, but I think it's the worst way to view people. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not. It's not like I don't know. There's, it just seems like everyone has so many issues, and it, like everything is just chaos. Like everyone is putting just like their issues on everyone else around them instead of just. I don't know. I think it's really sad. <laughs> I think it's sad too. I think it's sad mm -hmm. that the world isn't a perfect place and that people aren't perfect. Mm. Is there a part of you that doesn't want to be in a polyamorous or open relationship? Not if I'm going to get hurt by people like this. So, you know, that, but that's it. Like, it's not like, I don't, I don't think about it, but I start to like get scared that I'm going into like a bad path. What's a bad path? If it starts to affect me like mentally really bad, I guess, about more like experiences that's like really horrible. Yeah, so if would you be willing to be in a non polyamorous relationship? It would feel really strange to me what to like try to control my about? partner. To try to control my partner from feeling things for other people. Ah, interesting. So you think that a non-polyamorous relationship involves controlling your partner's feelings? Yeah. For me, it does. Huh. That's not my impression of most monogamous relationships. I don't know. It what? seems like there's a lot of jealousy and stuff. And why, why is there jealousy? I'm confused. Why is there... Have you been in a monogamous relationship before? No. Huh. Never. So what's your understanding of what a mon monogamous relationship is? Mm, basically, they want to be with one person, romantically and sexually. You want to be with one person. What do you mm -hmm. mean by the word want? Um... Like that's, that's what you, like the, the way you choose time. Is to yeah. Like, so I, I like the word time. choose mm -hmm. said two year old is outside my window now. Oh, <laughs> she's confused. Um, so I, I think I'm, I'm a little bit curious, you know, that you're, do you feel like you would be a less good person if you chose to be a monogamous relationship? Like your Maybe. take. I haven't thought about it. So, so can I share with you what my understanding of a monogamous relationship is? Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's about controlling anyone's feelings. In fact, I don't think it's about controlling at all. I think a good monogamous relationship has nothing to do with control. A good monogamous relationship has everything to do with choice. So it's when two people choose to engage in a romantic and sexual relationship only with each other. And I don't think that there's any controlling of feelings. Like, I don't think that, so I don't think it's reasonable to expect people to control their own feelings, let alone have your partner control your feelings. That sounds like a toxic relationship to me. When one partner tries to control the, uh, the way that the other partner feels, that sounds toxic to me. Mm -hmm. I'd say that, that people have feelings towards other human beings. That's completely normal. I can be romantically or sexually interested with people that are not my wife. She can be romantically or sexually interested in people that are not me. That's completely reasonable. Human beings have feelings. We don't really control our feelings. What we control are our actions. And so I think a, a, a monogamous relationship is a, a choice that your actions, that you're going to restrain certain, certain feelings and not choose to act on them for the sake of supporting a particular relationship. What do you think about that? Wait, can you say that one more time, the last thing? Yeah, so like it's not about controlling your feelings, it's about controlling your actions for the sake of your relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So I choose to not act upon the impulses that I have towards other women 
because I value my relationship more than a relationship with another woman. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think about that? Um, I guess it makes sense. What makes sense about it? Um, that it's about like your actions with other people. Like, I don't know how to, I don't know what to say. <laughs> sure. Did I? I mean, cause I don't think monog- monogamy is about control. Like that, that's my main point. I think it's about choice, right? It's sort of like, I mean, I can choose to live in a van and, and drive around in New Zealand and that's, I'm not saying that that's good or bad. I'm saying that, or I can choose to have a house and live there every day and sleep in the same place every day. I'm not placing a value judgment. I'm just saying that they're different. Mm-hmm. Um, Do you think a lot of people should, like use it as some sort of control? Absolutely. I, I think that people are assholes. And I think that being in a polyamorous relationship does not protect you from assholes. And I think that being in a monogamous relationship does not protect you from assholes. Although arguably, (laughs) yeah, although arguably being in a polyamorous relationship protects you less from assholes because there are more people coming in and out of the door of your relationship. Does that make sense? I just think statistically like, you know, if, yeah. With me? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not trying to advocate that you should be in a monogamous relationship. Are you, are you getting that <laughs> no, from me? No. Okay. It's just your perception of a monogamous relationship is different from the way that I see it. Mm-hmm. And so what are you thinking? Let me just think for a second. So no part of you wants to be in a monogamous relationship. Of course I could, I could like... I could probably be happy with one person, but I don't really, I, I don't feel like it's necessary for me to like, like try to like tell my partner that that part, partner like can't see anyone else than me. Yeah. So that actually sounds a lot like monogamy, oddly enough. So let I me tell thought- you why. So because I think that in I, my wife, I don't think at least, I, I mean, I don't think I've ever, you know, my, I, I'd like to think that my wife doesn't see other people because I tell her not to. She doesn't see other people because she chooses not to. Or I mean, I should speak for myself. So my wife hasn't told me that, you know, you're, I'm not allowed to see other women. It's just we sort of made a mutual choice that we're not going to do that. So I don't get the sense that I'm controlled by her, at least not in this aspect. When it comes to how much I play games and things like that, she definitely is very controlling. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, like, so that's the thing is, I mean, you keep on using the word control when Mm -hmm. when you talk about a monogamous relationship. And certainly there are people who are controlling. But I just don't know that that's restricted to monogamy. Mm -hmm. So help me understand, what do you mean by fiancé? Are you guys engaged to be married? Mm-hmm. Can you help me understand a little bit about how y'all decided to do that? Um, so we can continue dating each other. What does marriage have to do with that? Because I'm a Swedish citizen. I see. So just from a logistical perspective, it's hard for you to visit him so often unless... So it's kind of like if, if laws did not prevent you. If you lived in the U.S. and you had a green card or something like that, would you guys be, be getting married? I don't know. That's that's another dimension. Okay. But like, yeah. So I, like, I'm just hearing that, that, so it seems like it's primarily a legal thing. It's not like you guys... Do no, you we va- love each other and we want to get married. Okay, so, yeah. you, so, so you value the instant, like that marriage means something to you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. I just... Of course it is. Like we, we go through a lot to like be able to like be together. Sure. So yeah. 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 What does it mean to you? To go through so much. Yeah. Like with a person. Yeah. That we become really strong, I would say. What are you feeling now? some sort of a happiness, I don't know. It feels like we go through a lot of things together and we become really good. 
So that's really good. <laughs> I don't think I've ever gone through so much with someone. It, and the fact that you guys have stayed together through it all seems to be really important. <laughs> yeah. Because it sounds like last year, the last year of your life has been really tough. Yeah. But we always come out together, which is really cool. It sounds like you can really count on him. Yeah. Yeah, I really, really do love him so much. I used to, I used to get scared when like more like bad stuff happens because I just want us to be together so badly. What are you afraid of? <laughs> I'm scared that I'm not gonna be able to um to like go through it. Go through what? Just like more like difficult scenarios. That could basically be other people, or this fucking pandemic, or, like, <laughs> his paperwork, like, all of this stuff. I just hope, you know, there's, like, a lot of, like, scary stuff, and... Are yeah, you afraid you're not going to be strong enough? Yeah. Where do you get that idea? <laughs> because I'm not sure how much I can push myself, right? Or... Why are you pushing yourself? Because, <laughs> because, uh, because, uh, because it's really important for me and for him too. To do that. Help me understand what. You, so when when you say the phrase "push yourself," I think about like when I push myself. Mm -hmm. There's a part of me that wants to do something, and there's a part of me that doesn't want to do something. And mm -hmm. so the part of me that wants to do it pushes the part that doesn't want to do it. That's what pushing yourself is, right? What is yeah. the part of you, what do you want to push yourself to do? What do you mean practically? What does that look like in, in your relationship or in your life? If it's like, it's just like a really hard mountain to climb, I guess. What's the mountain? I'm, con I'm having trouble understanding. I mean, you're like conveying the... a lot of feelings and imagery. So I get the sense that it's a tall, you know, there's a long road ahead of you. Right. And it seems really awesome that it's actually been a long road behind you, too. And you guys have been through it together and y'all are still here. Y'all are still together and there's still mm -hmm. a long way to go. That I understand, but I'm not quite sure what the mountain looks like. Like it, it could be. Um, just think about it like being me, um, like leaving New Zealand or like going to America away from like a lot of friends mm. in Sweden or being away from my friends in New Zealand or having a lot of audience on the internet or having um, not being able to work because I can't work in America. Um, like giving up a lot of things, mm. you know? Wow. So and this has nothing also to do go with through your... a lot of crazy people and like go through like a lot and then now have long distance that I don't know when it's gonna end. Like this is like a lot of things. Yeah, oh my God. Very intense. Yeah, it sounds overwhelming actually. I mean, issues of, yeah, I mean, it sounds like being in, stuck in Sweden is really rough on you. Yeah, I don't wanna be here. <laughs> You've never wanted to be there. No. <laughs> Can I just think for a second? Mm -hmm. It's so scary. You think so? Yeah, I mean, because you don't know what's going to happen, right? You don't know what you're going to... Like, you're thinking about what you're going to give up and what you're giving it up for and you don't know when it's gonna happen or what's gonna happen or, I mean, I can just imagine that like if you're giving up your friends in, in New Zealand and Sweden to move to America and you're streaming on Twitch and um, are there other streamers that have been part of the drama between like involving you and Destiny or it's like non-streamer people? There is streamer and non-streamer people. Yeah, so just kind of like, you know, what I'm hearing from you is that you're engaged in this world, right? This world of of destiny and, and open relationships and, and streaming. And some of that stuff has been awesome and is amazing and is like really, really a solid foundation for you to build on. 
and some of it, it sounds like it's been kind of like really toxic and hurtful. And what I'm, what, the thing that just hearing everything that you said, the thing that kind of worries me the most is you're, you're sort of diving into all of that. Really quick, really fast. Yeah. Yeah. You're really going in. And I'm, and then, and I'm only 21. It's like, it's like a lot of, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. What do you think about, when are you guys going to get married? Do you know? If COVID wasn't happening and y'all talked about it? I was supposed, like, why I'm in Sweden is basically because I had to do an interview that I can't do because the American embassy is closed. I see. And, and uh, what do you think about getting engaged at the age of 21? It doesn't, it doesn't, like, to me, it doesn't really mean, like, I'm, like, becoming something different. <laughs> like, it doesn't really do that for me. Like, what it means is probably that I'm going through a lot for a person that I really love and that I really care about and that mm. I want to be with. And how long do you guys think you're going to be together? Hopefully for the rest of my life. Sure. Yeah, I hope so, too. It sounds like it's a very yeah. strong relationship. That... Mm -hmm. mm. You've talked to him, too. <laughs> if yeah, you remember. I'm a huge fan of Destiny's. I think he's a fantastic yeah, so guy. You know. <laughs> yeah, so Yeah. I think it's, uh, I, to be honest, Melina, I'm a little bit impressed. He's in love with you, right? Mm -hmm. That's not easy to do. For him? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was also a struggle for a long time, but. Yeah, I think it's. I think we like came to a point where it's like, okay. I, I think that y'all's relationship is really special. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, and... I would say so too. That's why I'm like, I can't, like, I'm not going to give that up. Fuck no. <laughs> yeah. It's worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. Is there something in particular I can help you with? Um, I think maybe like I feel I feel like I don't really understand myself that well, or like why I'm the way I am because I feel like like with all of this experience, it feels like it's very hard for me to like find people that that has gone through something similar or that is like really similar like minded to me. So I feel a little bit lonely with it. And, yeah. And I feel like I'm not, like, I, yeah. You feel alone? Mm-hmm. A bit, like, with, with that, like... With what? With all this... With my life. I don't know. It's just... People are, like, if I talk to people that I used to know, like, five years ago, it's like we don't have anything to talk about. And if I really, like, have a lot of things that I feel like I want to vent about, it's... Like, they, they don't know, like, what to say, or, like, they don't really know. Like, they, they don't know. Like, they can't understand. What do you feel like venting about today? Um, probably that I'm scared. You're scared of what? What are you afraid of? Mm, maybe, like, going in the wrong direction. What direction? What is it? What, what does that look like? Tell me what the direction is. like... Are. The way the way life is now compared to what it was about like two years ago is very different. What's different and there's it? like a lot of really cool things, but it's very, very, very intense. What do you, you know? what's intense about it? Um that there's it feels like there's no like time to like process because there's like new things all the time happening. That gets me and I feel like every time something new happens, I feel like I get like way like I feel like I get sadder because of it because I feel like oh not another like another thing happening can whatever. you give me an example of a new thing that happened recently that made you sadder like the whole Kitarino drama for example made me really sad what is that I don't I don't know what is Kitarino um, a person just a streamer okay what happened um what what can I say she basically uh, was lying to a bunch of people. And About what? And really fucking hardcore. And, and I'm sorry? Like her, she lied to a lot of people and stuff. About, and then, about what? Like romantically. Sort of. She, she cheated on people, basically. That's what she did. She cheated on people? Mm -hmm. What does that have to do with you? No, it's just, it just makes me sad to like see that a person that I am close with can do something like that. I see. Yeah, because I never thought that 
like I didn't know any like about anything and then it just like came out and it's also really sad that someone like gets so much hate from the internet as well and stuff and it's just like really hard K- Katerina I don't got know. a lot of hate yeah how do you feel about that I don't think anyone deserves that much hate no matter what they do mm. from so many people I don't think just that... the judgment of the internet yeah it's just but it's just like insane it's just crazy and it just makes me sad that so many people can be so mean about things they're not like involved with at all and then that someone that i care about and really like i love kate i do like seeing her like doing something like that makes me really sad and then like seeing people that got hurt by it feeling sad it makes me sad too i don't know i just it, it has nothing to do with me but i just feel sad about like watching things like happening yeah, it seems to me like you're also someone... So this happens with people who have Shakti, by the way, is that mm-hmm. they take on the hurt of other people. So mm-hmm. it's almost like... Um, so the people that I work with who have powerful Shaktis, I kind of think of them like a sponge. They, so they can be a wonderful influence for a family or a company or a relationship because they can absorb a lot of the hurt of other people. And that's part of what draws people to you is that, you know, by by having you be a part of their conversations and things like that, they actually feel better because it's almost like there's a transfer of their pain to you. Does that sort of make sense? Can you say one more time? Yeah, so like it's almost like they're transferring their pain to you. Mm -hmm. So I kind of think about you like a sponge that's absorbing something. So if I have like water that's spilled on the table and I take a sponge and I wipe it across the, the table, there's no more water on the table, but the water is in the sponge. And you are that sponge. Mm-hmm. And where there used to be like water on the table, like now that's filled, you're holding that. And so a lot of people who, are, who have Shakti like you do, I see this pattern where I have to teach them how to squeeze out the water from their sponge because mm-hmm. they take it in so easily from other people. And it's kind of like, you know, you, we were talking about this earlier about you giving. You give and you also absorb negativity from others and you're very sensitive to negativity. You're probably also very empathic. That's another way that people put it. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if the reason that you're scared, so, so I'm sorry, you were saying that maybe the way to you, maybe the way that I could help you is by handling the intensity, right? You were talking about intensity and all this Twitch streaming stuff. There's a lot of drama on Twitch. Yeah. And it sucks. I feel like I don't really know what the fuck I'm doing here because of it. Because I don't, I don't really see myself as being like a Twitch person. Like I'm not a part of that. Why are you a part of it then? Because I, the way they are and the way they do things and the way people talk and the whole community and all the like the, what you call it, like the vibes from everything is just like very, like not from where I come from. I'm. You're, yeah, you're, no. you're not built for streaming. You're built for being in a van that's driving across New Zealand. Yeah. Exactly. So why, why but, are you a part of this community? Um, because it sort of just happened because I'm dating a streamer. So, and, and then I think the, the main thing for me to do it the first place was to sort of make more people happy with my words or with to like show them like the adventures that I do to like make them happy or maybe like try to make them feel like they can get out of their like computer like chair Mm. and like go on an adventure sort of because I do that because it makes me really happy. So how long have you wanted to make people happy? I just think that's just my nature. It's just like how I work, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think I've always been like that since I was very like young. Can you tell me what growing up in Sweden was like? Um, I have two sisters, two younger ones. Um, my mom is very, very, she's always been very depressed, very dramatic, very emotional, and she's been putting it out on her kids a lot. My dad is very, um, he's a happy person, but you can tell that he, that he, he gets, I can tell that he gets really sad about really dramatic, sad people. So he kind of just like shuts off and like he doesn't really show a lot of feelings in that way. He or, like gets talk about feelings. Shut off by dramatic people. Yeah, like he he doesn't. If whenever my mom wanted to talk to him about something and she was like being very very dramatic, he would just like go up to his bedroom and go to sleep, and she would sit and cry. 
or like take it out on us basically that's like the whole when it comes to family how would your dad react to you when you were happy um i don't remember that did you so you said that you've always sort of wanted to make people happy can you mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about when you said your your mom was depressed and emotional and so you said something towards her kids what mm -hmm. what do you mean by that like i think she sort of did not think about what to say to her kids and when she was being she sad saying? she would tell um i don't know she would tell me a lot about her so, like herself feeling really bad and stuff how would you feel when she told you those kinds of things that it was my that i, I was supposed to take care of her mm -hmm. like make you feel happy you felt a responsibility to make her happy mm -hmm. really? so like kind of, like i became a little bit like her therapist the kid since sure. i was like seven since you were what Hold on, let me see if I can switch seven. servers. Since you were seven. Mm -hmm. Let's try moving servers. Because you're in Europe, right? Let's see, let's see if this oh, is better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, hmm. So it sounds like from a young age, you started to feel like you were giving that energy to her, actually. Mm -hmm. What about to your dad? Mm. He, he was just like a lot on his own sort of or like a little bit like he I think the best thing probably like growing up was probably what my dad even though he doesn't really he, he didn't really talk about feelings and stuff he we we used to have a country house where he grew up so he took us out there and that was probably the best thing in my whole childhood because I used got to be in nature and just being like alone like taking walks like going to swim like it's like being close to nature was really important and like watching movies with him and like him like taking us like on walks and stuff was really good mm -hmm. even though he didn't talk about feelings and stuff and my mom didn't really like come with us on that at all she didn't like it hmm do you think maybe the reason you enjoyed it was because your mom wasn't there wait what do you think maybe the reason oh, hold on let me see if i can switch servers again because mm -hmm. it looks like we're lagging yeah let's go straight to europe let me just check Twitch real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you feel like the, the, any chance that you reason, one of the reasons you liked being traveling with your dad was because your mom didn't come with you? Like, so you weren't around her and you didn't no, feel... No, I remember, I remember we wanted her to come all yeah. the time. But she didn't. She was busy doing other things. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was like... um. She, it felt like she focused a lot about, like on, like random people all the time. I remember that she had some sort of friend from another country coming over for about two weeks, and she took two weeks, um, like vacation from her job because she wanted to like show him around in Sweden. And mm. I remember I felt really sad because I felt like she never took two weeks off to like be with us. Wow. And that, yeah, I, I remember I was really sad about that. It's funny. Maybe this is a little bit too much of like, you know, therapist-y. But I, I mean, it sounds to me like it, it's just, now I understand why it was so significant for Destiny to fly halfway across the world to like hang out with you for two weeks. <laughs> why? I mean, because it sounds like it's the exact opposite of what your mom did, right? I mean, it, it's like your your mom would spend go out of her way to spend time with a random person from another country, but she wouldn't come with you to like a cabin in the wilderness. And, mm -hmm. and you know, so she was prioritizing this random person and like for destiny to fly halfway across the world and, and spend time with you. Like he was, he, like you mattered to him. He wanted to mm -hmm. be with you. And that yeah. sounds, I mean, I can sort of see, like, does that seem rela feel related to you at all or not really? Um, I Oh, hmm. we're lagging. Hold on. Yeah. Fuck. Hold is on. it my internet? Or is... I'm not sure if it's an internet, to be honest. 
It could just be uh, the Discord yeah. servers. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that maybe, or like, how? Do, what do you? What do you mean by that? Like that? It's like. Well, I mean, I just I, so. Let me try to share a couple of thoughts. I don't know how well these are going to land with you. Mm -hmm. um, so I apologize. I'm happy to sort of have a follow-up conversation to kind of dig into some of this stuff. But mm -hmm. so the first thing, uh, Melina, is that, you know, I think that, um, let me just think for a second. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting that you grew up in a place where it seems like you had to have your happy feelings on the outside and your sad feelings on the inside. That's kind of the picture that I get. Mm -hmm. And, and I don't so, think it really mattered about me being sad. It probably mattered more about other people being sad than me. Absolutely. Right. So that, that like, cause you also said, so it's, it's not only your mom, because you kind of said that you were sort of your mom's therapist from the age of seven, you were, you would try to comfort her. You would try to make her happy. Um, but you also said that your dad shut down any time someone approached him with negative emotion and he would withdraw from it. So yeah, the funny just thing, walk away from it. Yeah, so the funny thing there is I'm imagining seven-year-old you and you have a pile of feelings, some of which are good and some of which are bad. And so if your mom sort of takes all the good feelings, because those are the ones that you show her, where do you put the bad feelings? And usually what happens in a relationship is you show those feelings to the other parent. Right. Mm -hmm. So like if, if, if like two year old, once again, if two year old, if I yell at my two year old, she runs to her mom for comfort. So anytime like one parent puts pressure on a child, usually that child turns to the other parent to balance that pressure. The tricky thing about your situation is that I'm hearing that I can imagine that you probably, when you were very young, tried to share your negative feelings with your dad, but you noticed that he retreated from them. Mm -hmm. And so you had to be happy with your mom and you had to be happy with your dad. And, mm -hmm. and so that sort of makes sense because this whole time we've been talking to you and it seems like all you really care about is other people's happiness. Like when we ask you, like you belong in a van in New Zealand and camping and in nature and wilderness. And why are you streaming? It's because you want to make other people happy. That's what you said. So you're sacrificing yourself for the sake of making other people happy. And would you say that you're someone who does that? Yeah. And then we get to the polyamorous relationship. And so is the polyamorous relationship painful for you? Well, not working out with other people, yeah. Yeah, so let well, me kind of... ask you again. Is the polyamorous relationship painful for you? Yes, some. And, and if we ask you why you do it, your answer is because you really love being loved by destiny and you, wanna, you want other people to experience that love. So I think we have another case of something actually being quite painful for you and it sounds like it's been pretty rough over the last year and you're willing to do it to make other people happy to give mm -hmm. other people the opportunity to be loved by destiny mm -hmm. what do you think about that yeah it sounds very correct so i think the tricky thing for you melina is i wonder how would you, you would feel if you started putting yourself first I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure if, it's, if I've ever done that. Yeah. What do you think about that? It tells me that it's selfish. Huh? Fuck. Something is... <laughs> I don't know what's going on with the server. Hold yeah. on one second. Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. No, I can't do that. I'm also, yeah. Okay, let's just let. Uh, God damn it, we're right at the climax. <laughs> okay. All right. Try again. How does it yes. feel? To put yourself first. Something inside me tells me that it's selfish. 
So now we get to push yourself. Because you said earlier that you were pushing yourself. And I think what you're pushing, what you have to push against is the part of you that feels like you're being selfish. What do you think? Mm -hmm. This is also what feels unfair to you because other people are being selfish in your polyamorous relationship and you Mm -hmm. are not. And so it's like other people are coming and it's just like with the eggs. Like she takes a bite of my eggs, but I don't get a bite of hers. Mm -hmm. Right. That doesn't work. So Melina, I'm going to share one or any, any thoughts or questions? No, I think it's maybe later. So can I share with you like a a story? And I guess we have maybe somewhat of a conclusion for you. Mm -hmm. So I think you're a wonderful person. And I think it's wonderful that you put other people first. But I think unless you get to be really, really good at what you do, you're going to get, you're going to continue getting hurt if you continue to be in the situation. And I'm not trying to say you should or shouldn't do anything. It's just I've worked with a fair number of people who have been in open or polyamorous relationships and there's usually like a lot of hurt. I don't know how else to put it. Um, Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. So my mom once told me that if you want to be happy, okay. Let me just think about where to start with this. So in Hinduism, there are two incarnations of this particular god named Vishnu. One of the incarnations is this guy named Ram. And Ram was sort of like this idea of like the ideal human being. So he was just and he was kind and he was noble and he was honest and he was giving. And Ram's story is that he, um, this is going to be great actually, this is a great story. So Mm -hmm. what happens is he decides that there's a princess that he wants to marry. And then there's another king that wants to marry that same princess. The princess's name is Sita. So they actually have this kind of competition where the winner of the competition gets to marry Sita. And so Ram ends up winning the competition because Sita actually doesn't let this other king, this other guy's name is Ravan. She doesn't let him compete. So they're going to have a contest and the winner of the contest gets Sita's hand in marriage. So Ram wins. He ends up marrying Sita and Sita doesn't let this guy Ravan. She doesn't let him compete. So Ravan gets pissed because he's like, that's unfair. I should be able to compete too. And so after Ram and Sita get married, Ravan actually kidnaps her and takes her to his island where he tries to get her to fall in love with him. Mm-hmm. And then Ram essentially raises an army and fights a war, kills Ravan, and then brings Sita back. With me so far? Mm-hmm. So once he comes back, something funny happens. So Ram is a king at this point and Sita is a queen. And his court really doesn't like Sita. And Ram is like, what's wrong? Like, I don't understand. Like, why don't you guys like her? And they say, well, she was kind of like living in Ravan's house for a couple of years. Like, you never really know what happened. Maybe she was unfaithful to you. And Ram, Ram says, well, she says she's not an unfaithful. And, and I don't, I, be, I mean, she says she was faithful and I believe her. So like, I don't see why it's a problem for you guys. And despite Ram's best attempts to convince his court that she's, we should be, everything should be fine now because I fought a battle and I won and I killed the bad guy and I came home with the queen. Like everything's good, right? This is how the story ends. His court is basically like, nah, we just don't trust her. They're haters. They're like the internet. Mm -hmm. And so Ram decides that he's going to put the needs of the kingdom ahead of his marriage and decides that it's, it's better for a, a kingdom to have a queen that they can love and respect even that's more important than like whether she was faithful or not. So he ends up divorcing her. What do you think about that? Um, I don't know. (laughs) Okay. So now let me tell you about the other incarnation. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a thousand years later, the same God supposedly incarnates as another person named Krishna. And Krishna is different from Ram, even though it's sort of supposed to be the same God in two different bodies. Krishna, um, you know, grows up and has uh, a couple of wives and up to maybe a thousand girlfriends. So mm-hmm. he maybe was, in, it sounds like he was in a polyamorous relationship. Yeah. And so part of the reason that he actually had a, a thousand girlfriends or what some people say is that like there were a fair number of women who were unsupported 
And so he ended up marrying them. Maybe was a player, unclear. Actually, he was a player. The story's all to kind of describe him as a player. But he like supported a lot of women and had like lots of wives. And he also does like all kinds of like relatively shady things. So whereas Ram would never lie, like Krishna would, um, let me try to come up with a quick story. So in, in ancient India, there was a code of war. But am I losing you, by the way? I, I'm not, I can't tell. Okay. <laughs> So there's this code of war where you basically are not allowed to fight after the sun goes down. So like everyone wakes up in the morning, once dawn, once the sun is above the horizon, you start fighting and then you fight all day. And when the sun goes down, you stop fighting. No sneak attacks, no nighttime attacks, nothing like that. So there's like a code that people adhere to. So one day Krishna realizes that there's going to be an eclipse. And so it's going to look like the sun is going to go down. So he goes to his, his, army basically he's an advisor he doesn't actually fight himself and he says by the way something funny is going to happen today the sun is going to go down or it's going to look like it gets dark and then you guys are going to everyone's going to want to stop fighting and i want you guys to stop fighting for like 10 minutes and when the other army puts their weapons away i want you to pull out your weapons and then basically slaughter them while they'll, while they're defenseless and then his troops are like but wait, so you want us to violate the code of war? And he's like, no, 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 trust me. You're not violating the code of war, but just do what I say. And so sure enough, the eclipse happens. The sun appears to go down or it gets dark like the sun is going down. So everyone stops fighting. Everyone's kind of confused because it happened a couple of hours early, but maybe they lost track of time. And Krishna's side waits for everyone to put their weapons away. And then he gives the order and then his troops basically slaughter like thousands or tens of thousands of unarmed people. And they win the day. And then Krishna says, by the way, technically we didn't make a mistake. Like technically we did exactly what we were supposed to do. So good job. Can you see how Ram and Krishna are different? Um, like have I sort of made it clear that they're kind of like different people? I think you have to explain a little bit. So like Ram is a super noble guy. Like Ram would never do that. He's a good guy. He cares yeah. about other people. Krishna doesn't give a shit about other people. Mm -hmm. He'll adhere to the code of what he's technically supposed to do, but he puts himself first, right? Ram yeah. puts other people first. And it's not that Krishna puts himself first at the expense of other people. He's not a bad person, but he doesn't like adhere to a code. He, he's sort of, a, have you heard this phrase, the ends justifies the means? No. So that's a phrase that means like, you know, if you have to steal to feed your family, that's okay. Like the end goal is the important thing. Even if you have to do something bad in the middle, like it's okay to do something. It's okay to do bad things for good reasons. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So Ram is someone who would say it's not okay to do bad things for good reasons. And Krishna is someone that it's okay to do bad things if you're doing it for the right reasons. What do you think? Do you think it's okay to do bad things for good reasons? I don't think I would do it. I completely agree. Yeah. <laughs> so I think you're more like Ram than you are like Krishna. Yeah. yeah. So there are two things that I'd leave you with. My mom once told me something very, very wise when I was 15. She says, if you want to live a good life, live like Ram. And if you want to live a happy life, live like Krishna. So I put the same thing to you, Melina, that, you know, I don't really know, but sometimes I pretend to be a wise person when I stream on Twitch. So what I would tell you is that I think the person that you are, who's incredibly giving and you put other people ahead of yourself, the world is filled with a lot of people who will take advantage of you. And I'm, it's sad that you've had to learn that lesson. But I also think that the world is filled with lots of good people too. In fact, I believe that it's not good people or bad people that everyone has a good side and everyone has a bad side. That's what I believe. So I believe that we all have Ram within us and we all have Krishna within us. And I think you're in for a lot of suffering if you don't, if you continue to sort of mindlessly put other people first. So I put other people first too, but I'm just really mindful about the way that I do it. Like I think, you know, some people think I'm a good person. I think I'm kind of like a good person, kind of. But I also okay. set limits. Like I'm not going to sacrifice some things about my health and well-being for the sake of helping other people. Mm -hmm. And I think going forward, I would really encourage you to think a little bit about whether you can be a little bit more selfish and what that would feel like. 
Because I think you're learning. I'm not, I'm not sure if I can do it. I'm. <laughs> or, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, I don't know how, how I can do that. Yeah, I don't or, know how you can do it either. I'm not even sure that you should do it. What I think you should do, though, is I think you have this reflexive part of you that probably started when you were a child where you started putting other people ahead of you. And I think that that's actually not healthy for people. It's not even healthy for the people that you do that for. And I don't know, maybe I can explain this real quick. So, you know, if you have a relationship where one person does all of the work and one person does all of the relaxation, that's not healthy for either person. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I wonder if like all of these relationships that you engage in, you're sharing your food and they're not sharing theirs. I don't know if that's actually good for them. Mm, but it feels like it's, it feels like it's everyone almost. I don't know. It feels like it's a lot of people. Yeah. So I think you've got to make but a decision I... about whether you want to continue being taken advantage of because it sounds like that's what's happening. Would you say that that's fair? No. No? How would you describe it? You don't think you're getting taken advantage of? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So I think you've got to think a lot about whether you want to let yourself do that. And I think if, if you don't want to be taken advantage of, I think part of what that means is being a little bit more selfish. And I don't think being selfish is a bad thing. That's the whole point of all of this stuff is I think you've got to think about it. You know, when you let someone into your life because you want them to be loved by destiny... Are you willing to have them shut the door in your face? No. Okay. Isn't that being really? selfish though? I Aren't you depriving them of destiny's it. love? I don't think it's okay to me. Good. I don't think it is either. Mm -hmm. And I don't think being selfish is a bad person, especially someone like you. Because the last thing that I'll share with you is this is what I see with people who have Shakti, is that they get drained dry by the hungry people. Mm -hmm. That everyone wants a piece of you and you're so loving and you're so kind that they're just going to suck you dry. And you have to learn, you have to learn how to like when to give and when not to give. And that should be under your control instead of it being like completely random and mm -hmm. under their control. Because otherwise, I think you're in for years and years and years of suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. What, like, situations could it be? What situations could what, like, years of suffering like, and pain? Like, when I, no, like, more, what situation could it be where I have to, like, think more selfish? I mean, personally, I would start with, the two things I would think about would be streaming and your relationship. So I'd think about everything that you do is a transaction. You're giving something and you're getting something. Because that's what it is, right? If you don't, if, if streaming opens you up to drama, you're, what, you're helping a bunch of people, but you're also opening up yourself up to drama. So like, which one do you want to do? Like, is it worth it or is it not worth it? Mm -hmm. That's one example. I think the other thing, which I think you guys are, it sounds like y'all are already exploring is like being a little bit careful about who you let into your open relationship. Yeah. And the last thing, this is going to be the hardest one is if you feel hurt by something, can you ask people to make a sacrifice so that you feel less hurt? I guess I can ask. Do you feel comfortable asking? Yeah. So let's say that there was someone that you felt like was toxic for your relationship. Would you feel mm -hmm. comfortable asking De Destiny to like remove them from your life or see less of them or anything like that? Or would you feel like that's controlling? I don't think he would be very happy with it. Okay. So beautiful. So notice I asked you a question and what was your answer? He wouldn't be happy with it, which is not selfish. Exactly. Say. That's, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what you need to think about, right? So then y'all, I mean, if you guys are married in my mind, that means that y'all are special and there are other people that are less special than you are in the relationship. That could be a problem on my end, 
right? That you no, guys love I, each other. I would say that's pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, and, and in my mind, that sort of means that like, so the way that you're putting him first, I think he should put you first, right? That's the only way it works. It's like, you're saying like, he wouldn't be very happy with it. And, and that's so, so the question is like, are you okay with that? Is he okay with that? Are you guys in a relationship where it's okay for him to be happy? Because in, in, cause think about the opposite. Like if, if you don't talk to him about that, you're unhappy, right? Mm-hmm. If there's someone toxic in y'all's relationship, you're unhappy and he's, he's fine with it. And if you talk to him, maybe he becomes unhappy and then do you become happy? Or does it end up somewhere in the middle? I would, I would, I would feel so bad. Yeah. I don't think I would be happy about him not being happy. Yeah. So I, in my mind, it's not asking him to necessarily do something. I think the healthiest thing to do is have a conversation about it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and to me, it seems very clear that you put him ahead of you. I would say so. I feel yeah. like I give up a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. But I think he does that too. Sure. And that's how a marriage works. Yeah. Right. So even an open one. So I think about marriage as giving 60 and taking 40. You give 60 and he takes 40 and he gives 60 and you take 40. That's the only way it works. Mm-hmm. So, but I mean, I, hopefully you caught that, right? Like the, your first thought is not about you. It's about other people. It doesn't make yeah. you, I mean, that makes you a good person for, by all means. And I'm not saying that you should become a selfish asshole. I'm not saying that you should try to control destiny. I'm saying that if something hurts you, and you're in a relationship, I would advise you to talk to your partner or fiance about what's painful to you. Because you're not, remember, once again, it's not about like you controlling him and making him, giving, making him give something up. In my mind, it's about you sharing your feelings with them and then hopefully he'll choose what you would choose. Like if he came to you and he said, hey, you're in this relationship with this person, it's very hurtful to me, what would you do? I would probably try to talk about it and like see if there's any, if there's anything we could do or if there's any misunderstandings or anything Perfect. that happened. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's what we're talking about. Right. But I would be careful because in, I would imagine just based on your thoughts that you wouldn't even bring it up for, with him because you're afraid that he wouldn't like it. Um, I think I'm better at doing that now. Good. And I think you've but got to... I think, yeah. Yeah, you think what? I think it maybe was worse before, maybe. Yep, I can imagine. Mm-hmm. I think you're, I'm sure you're better now, Melina. I think you still have a little ways to go. Mm-hmm. Why do you think that? Because I think it's hard to undo a life, a, an upbringing and a life of putting other people first. Mm. I think it's hard to be less selfish. I mean, uh, more selfish, sorry. Because you've, you've been a giver your entire life and it can feel very, very bad to not be a giver. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm, I'm hopeful mm-hmm. for you. And I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for Destiny. Yeah. I'm a big fan of both of y'all at this point. So I hope you Why guys can that? really work. <laughs> huh? Why is that? Why are you a big fan? Of you or for, of Destiny? both or anything i'm a big fan of destiny because i just have a lot of respect for him like i think he's uh um i think he's one of the very few people who practices what he preaches Mm -hmm. so i think that um he doesn't take things at face value and the conclusions that he comes to are really like thought out and he's very Mm open-minded Mm-hmm. So I respect him for that. And I just personally, I like him. Like I enjoy watching his stream. Like I find him to be mm-hmm. entertaining. Um, why am I a fan for you? Because I think that you are a good person. I'm not so sure he is, but I think he chooses to be good. And you I don't think, think he's a good person? <laughs> I think he chooses to be good. Yeah. Which I respect more than someone who has to be good, which is you. Mm-hmm. So I think you're not actually in control of your goodness, which I think is actually a problem. Um, but I think that you're a wonderful person and I think that the world needs more people like you and the world would be a better place if there were more people like you. But unfortunately, the world isn't filled with people like you. So I think you're in for a lot of hurt. It doesn't mean that you can't live a fulfilling life. I think it'll just be, you're going to have to make a lot of sacrifices 
if you continue living the way that you used to. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be hard because, you know, you, the first thought that you have is about other people. Yeah. (laughs) And that's, that's a painful way to live. It's not my place to say that you should do this or should, shouldn't do that. I mean, that's for you to decide. All I really want you to do is notice when you think about other people instead of yourself. And especially if there's one person in the world that you should be able to have, and this is my value, so this is my bias, there's one person in the world that you should be able to have a conversation about your feelings about, even if it negatively impacts them, it's your fiance or husband. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? That's the one person that you should not feel alone from. Whereas I feel like yeah. you probably feel a al- lot, like you probably withhold a lot of stuff because of the way that he, you're concerned about his reactions. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Any yeah. other thoughts or questions? No, I think, I think it's good. I'm well, really happy that I got to talk to you. Me too. I, I'm afraid <laughs> that I wasn't very helpful to you, but um, I really You don't enjoyed think so? I don't know. Hmm. I don't know if what I said, I, I felt like I wasn't very clear today, but oh. we'll see. It's... um. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to follow, I think, especially with like language stuff. Yeah. But, but it's okay. Like I followed everything. Yeah. So good luck. And then luck. I ask if there's something. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, if you have any other questions or you want to follow up at some point, I'd, I'd be more than happy to. And I, I really, Malina, I wish you all the best. Like I know COVID sucks and, and mm-hmm. all that stuff, but I, I really hope that, you know, things do work out between the two of y'all. I'm sure they will. It sounds like mm-hmm. both of you guys care a lot about each other. I think so, yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm really happy that you have someone in your life like that. And I'm really happy for Destiny that he has someone in his life like you. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Take care. Okay, thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All righty. Oh, I didn't, fuck, I, I didn't meditate. Let me actually message her real quick, see if you want. Do you want to meditate? I can teach you something. Okay, we're meditating. Hold on. What about the meditation? <laughs> yeah, do you want to... So I, I, I teach people meditation sometimes on stream. Are you in, Do you meditate? Um, it comes in periods. Okay. But I do that. Mm-hmm. Do you, would, would you like to do some meditation? Is there some kind of meditation that you like to do? I don't think it, there's like any specific ones that I do is just more like i don't know i think i do like a little bit in my own way when okay. i do it mm-hmm. can but i it's been a while can i try to teach you something yeah okay so this is i'm going to try to figure this out myself as we're doing it okay so i apologize mm-hmm. for that so I, I want the people who are watching to also okay. follow along but i'm just going to try something if it doesn't work well i'll teach you some very focused breathing or something like that so i want you to close your eyes i'm going to ask you to explore some stuff within you okay Great. See, already the breath changes. Mm -hmm. So you're already doing it. This is fantastic. So I want you to just notice, what do you, like, how are you, what's changed? When I focus on it? Yeah. Like, like, do you feel different? Um, yeah. How do you feel? What's different? We've been talking for almost like an hour and a half, Mm -hmm. right? So how do you feel different now? Like... Like all of the things that I usually think about when I, when I think, you know, yep. <laughs> I don't know, yep. but it's Good. gone. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Right. So you guys can see it. Like, uh, especially we can see your, your clavicle, like your collarbone. What does that mean? The, the, the right side of your neck. So because of the shirt that you're wearing, you can actually see the way that you're taking a breath really very easily. So that's very helpful mm-hmm. actually. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to ask you. So to look for the part of you that wants to make the world a better place. Look for that part inside you, the part of you that wants other people to be happy. Can you find it? Yeah. What does that feel like? Um, I think that's where I usually feel stuff most from. Where it's either like a pressure or I feel... 
I don't know, this is where I feel anxious or this is where I feel like really, like if I feel a lot of love, I feel it from there as well. Yeah. So then I want you to just think about this. When you feel a lot of love for people, is that just a positive feeling in your chest or is there also a negative feeling that comes with it? Mm, there's a negative thing too. So let's just pause and think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. Right? That's kind of strange because generally speaking, when, like when I think about, um, you know, when I'm loving one of my kids, I don't have a negative feeling that comes with that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But I do imagine that when you feel some amount of love, sometimes you feel something negative with it. Mm-hmm. What do you, just, can you, can you help us understand a little bit? And this may be hard. Can you help us understand like what the positive feels like and what the negative feels like? Like they're almost like two sides of a coin. Mm, the positive is like, um, that I want people to be happy. And I think that's good yeah. that I want that. And that makes me happy. Yep. But I also feel like I'm not in the picture. Yep. Some way. What does that feel like in your body? What does not being in the picture feel like in your body? Very small. Yes. And like not worth it, sort of. Yeah. Right, so I want you to just focus on those two sensations. I want you to find the love and the positivity that you feel towards other people. Mm -hmm. And then I want you to at the same time, notice that feeling of not being in the picture. Mm -hmm. Man, that's such a good summary for our entire conversation. <laughs> and because Melina, I think that's beautifully put. Because I think when you put other people first, you remove yourself in the picture, from the mm -hmm. picture. And I think the whole thing is that for, for you to truly be peaceful, I think you have to be a part of that picture. That's what you did with your mom, right? You set your own feelings aside. You let the whole picture, the whole picture is dominated by her. Mm -hmm. And notice whenever you, I want you to think back to like when she was struggling and you were able to f help her, how good you felt about yourself. Mm -hmm. How good you felt about her. And then also try to catch that little part of your sacrifice, what you gave up in order to do that. You gave something up from you and find that little thing. Can you find it? Where is it? Mm. It's like in the back. I don't know. Like it's like, Good. I don't know. It's it's hard to describe. It it feels like it like pulls me back a little bit. Yeah. It does pull you back, right? Because it helps. It keeps you from being this perfect person, this perfect giver. And how do you feel about that part of you? Um. Something I, I realize that I do, whenever I look at a picture of myself as a kid, I get really sad. Yeah. And that's like the same feeling I get when I think about this. Yeah. Because your childhood was very sad. <laughs> so I want you to sit with that feeling and I think what you've got to stop doing is trying to push it away. So I want you to understand this, Melina, that you have a six-year-old or seven-year-old inside you that wants to make the world a better place for everyone else. But no one takes care of her. 
right? Oh, that wouldn't make Destiny very happy. There she is again, always looking to help others. But she needs someone to take care of her too. And that person has to be you. Mm -hmm. So right now, these two feelings of caring for others and neglecting yourself for removing yourself from the picture from feeling like you're not in the picture that's got to change mm -hmm. and I want you to sit with these two feelings and just let them be and see if there's some way that you can let both of them coexist so take a deep breath in and notice that the front of your chest and your back both change they expand they move away from each other and then as you breathe out they come together Breathe in, they move away, and breathe out, they come together. Breathe in, and breathe out. And now let them naturally come together. Let them sit with each other. Let them mingle together. Now, Melina, I don't know exactly how to do this, but I'm going to ask you to try. Mm -hmm. I want you to take that part of you that puts, that loves other people unconditionally, the part of you that's capable of love, and I want you to turn it towards yourself. Because mm -hmm. all of your love always is going out, is going out, is going out. And then inside is a six or seven year old girl who gets neglected. She's the one who's giving, giving, giving. And give that to yourself. Send it from you to you. Now for the last phase, I want you to just try to notice your whole body. We've talked about things, we've felt things, there are feelings, there are thoughts, emotions, physical sensations. Just notice all of those things. And take a moment to realize that you are actually none of that. That's all in your body, it's all in your mind, but that there is a part of you that is underneath or above all of that and can see all of these things happening. And that that place is a little bit separated. It's a little bit peaceful. And now you can kind of take a little bit of a time out from everything that we've done and just sit with that part and just watch your body. Let it do whatever it wants now. Whether it be breathing a certain way, feeling a certain way, no problem. Good. And when you're ready, let yourself come back to Sweden, to COVID, to uncertainty streaming, toxicity, longing for a van in New Zealand. That is your life and it's okay because you're you and you have that peaceful part of you, you have that loving part of you, that you have the foundation of your relationship with destiny and you guys have been through a lot. doing okay mm -hmm. it's very nice <laughs> good i'm glad you enjoyed it mm -hmm. i don't really know how you can do that every day but <laughs> do what it just because i i try to teach people meditation like a practice they can do every day 
I'm not quite sure. But what I would say to you is I want you to notice that those two sides of the coin, whenever you find yourself like struggling to make a decision, should I talk? Should I not talk? Should I say this? Or I feel hurt. Try to find both of those parts of yourself and try to bring them together. And I think that'll help you. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I've never heard someone tell me this. Tell you what? That, that I seem to put myself away from, like, because of other people, that I want to make them happier. Yep. Oh, yeah. It, I don't think people notice it. No, they take it for granted. Yeah. That's what's unfair about it. So I feel very surprised, which was kind of what I really, like, it, I'm really happy that, that, you, that you sort of told me that. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave you with one last thing. I want you to do a Google image search of Durga. Durga is D-U-R-G-A. I'll, I'll DM you in a second. Um, and just take a look at it and let me know what you see. You know, if it resonates with you at all, what you think that person represents. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, we can, I'm just curious. But because mm-hmm. I, I think that that's you. When I see you, I see Durga inside you. And so mm-hmm. we'll see what your reaction is. Maybe it won't yeah. be pleasant. But, um, but anyway, thank you so much for coming on, Melina. I really am rooting for you, and I hope everything works out and stay safe and stuff. Thank you so much. And if there's some way we can support you, just let us know. Mm-hmm. Take care. Very sweet. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Okay. So let's do this real quick. Uh-oh. So let's just do this. Let me show you guys. So this is, oh God. Can we do a full image search of Durga? Guess what, I can show you guys this real quick. So this is Durga, if you guys are wondering. But I think she kind of really embodies that sense. Absolutely. So this guy who's saying, Durga's like, do I have to do everything around here? Absolutely. We'll go back to that real quick. Hold on. Let me show you guys this, right? So yeah, man. Like, don't you guys, like, don't you guys realize that's what Melina's doing? She's doing like 15 things. She's like taking care of everybody. Like when, when, when people were trying to symbolize people like Melina, they recognized that there are some, you know, women especially who were very badass and took care of everything around them. And they realized that like two hands is insufficient to capture the essence of who Melina is taking care of. Right? So here's, so this is a good one. Let's see what this is. Right? So she's also like stabbing people with spears and shit. That's why Hinduism is quite a Game of Thrones kind of. <laughs> it's like a fantasy RPG mythology. Um, uh, yeah, the tiger symbolizes her friendship with the Tiger King. Hell yeah, man. Oh man, that's too funny. Okay, let's see if we can do, um, let's do questions. Are we doing questions? Here we go. Okay, got a question? Hello? Hey. Hey. Oh, okay. Um, so if you're very empathic, uh, how should you live, leave a relationship in reference to like the difficulty of feeling the pain they feel and like, did you say how uh, should you leave a relationship? Yeah, because we were like Melina can can do it. Melina can like um, be in that relationship and she can hold on and stuff. But some people can't um, handle relationships if, like when they're very empathic. Yep. So it's like the pain that you feel when you hurt someone. Uh huh. Is is kind of like it doesn't help when you want to break up with them ah excellent question okay 
So there are two kind of answers. The first is that if you are an empathic person, there is a general way that you should learn how to manage your emotions. And then the breaking up is like a particular instance of that. So there's like a general principle and this is a practical application. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So first of all, the general principle is that you have to think about yourself like a sponge. So the thing about a sponge is you absorb things from other people. And the goal of a sponge is not necessarily to stop absorbing. It's to be able to wring the sponge out. So if you want to break up with someone, what you really need to do is have a place where you can wring those emotions out. Because if, if you try to, if the emotions are too much for you to bear, then you won't be able to break up with them, right? That's the basic problem. Uh, yeah. What yeah. What do you mean by place? Though? Huh? What do you mean by a place to wring them out? Yeah, great question. So that can be anything from friends or other kinds of emotional support to like physical practices like meditation or yoga to seeing a therapist. You just need some way to let the emotion inside you out. Because what's going to happen is as you fill up with their hurt, your desire to comfort them is going to take over because they're hurting and it's going to not let you break up with them. Yeah, that's what happens. Exactly. Um, so what you need to do is take that hurt on and instead of responding to it on your own, you need to like ring it out with someone else. So that can be like what? talking to a friend and just sort of talking to them about like, hey, like I'm really afraid that I'm hurting this person and I really want to help them and, and I don't want to break up with them, but like I feel like I have to, but I don't want to hurt them. You need some place to process those emotions outside of giving into the relationship. Okay, I think I get it. Yeah, so, so that can be, I mean, and as bizarre as it sounds, it, like, so that doesn't have to just be one thing. So I'd think a little bit about like, you know, strengthening yourself in terms of like, do you do yoga? Yeah, yoga helped a lot. Absolutely, right? So you say helped, like it's in the past tense. So, so I, well, when I started the, the, the webinar, it really like, helped a lot then now it's just like helping <laughs> good yeah so so i would say like if you can like try to even go to a yoga class because i think doing an hour of yoga three times a week oh you can't go to a yoga class it's covid never mind that doesn't help yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but i would say that you know doing a formal yoga practice can help a lot and then think a little bit about a couple of i mean do you have social supports you can lean on I have, I have family, I guess I have people I can talk to. Um, but my, my issue then becomes like, okay, but then I actually, like I can, um, leave my emotions, let's say with them and I can talk to them about, uh, the hurt that I may feel, but you know, the hurt's still going to be there. It's just going to be like less. Absolutely. And that's beautifully put. So then I think the, the next thing is is to recognize that this is going to be painful right and you have to develop yeah. and this is why like yoga and meditation is important that you have to develop the capacity within yourself to tolerate some of that pain until you bring the sponge out uh, ring the sponge out so you're going to absorb a bunch of water you're going to have to hold it in your sponge for a while and then you're going to wring it out over there and then you're going to come back and you're going to mop up more and then you're going to go over there and you're going to ring it out and you're going to come back and you're going to mop up more. And as you start to understand this about yourself, it'll actually become easier because the problem is that when you're a sponge and you don't have a place to ring out, you look at this puddle of water and you're like, I can't take care of all of this water. So the process of breaking up with this person is going to hurt them so much. It's too much hurt for them to handle. and It's too much hurt for you to handle. So you don't actually break up with them. Right? Yep. Right? So what you've got to do is recognize that like you can manage that amount of water if you can wring yourself out a couple of times. And while you're carrying that sponge from the puddle to where you're going to wring it out in the bucket or the sink, it's going to be painful. The, yeah. the last thing that I would do is consider telling your social supports that, hey, I'm going to try to break up with so-and-so and I'm going to need to lean on you for a couple of weeks. Can we set aside some time to like talk like every other day or something like that and set up like a formal structure to it and then go through the process? A structure. So like a, a schedule with like 
the friend or whatever. Yeah. And so like, it go- de- you decide how formal it is, but just first of all, signal to them that you want to do this and see if you can get them to like, understand that you're expecting something from them over a couple of weeks. Okay. Right. Okay. Like you don't want to like start day eight and they're like, they stop taking your calls because they don't have the emotional bandwidth. And then you're kind of fucked because you're halfway through the process. And then someone's yeah, taking your I bucket see. away. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm good with that. Okay. Thank awesome. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. Fantastic question. Take care. Ready. Uh, hi. Hey. How you doing, Duke? Good. All right. So my question is, um, how do you transition to being more selfish instead of uh, instead of putting putting people you love and care like first without neglecting them afterward? Well. Let me think about that. So first of all, there are a couple of different things in that question. So how do you get to be more selfish without neglecting them? So you have to, so this is, see that question is the problem because you think that putting yourself first is neglecting them. Do you see that? Like you're tying neglecting them with being selfish together. That in and of itself is the problem. Because just because you're being selfish doesn't mean that you're going to be neglecting them. Right? If we think about supporting another human being, there's a spectrum. There's like 100% supporting them and 0% supporting them. Let's say like less than 10% support is neglectful. But like there's a big middle range there where you can start to take care of yourself and prioritize yourself without being neglectful. Does that make sense? Sure, I I follow. Right, so why do you think that being selfish is gonna neglect other people? Well, it's the, the sense that like people rely on you, you know, either like mental support or like any kind of support or like just being out there. And like, if it's people you know for a long time, now you like kinda change to be more about yourself and like less, like you more focus on your own circle. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I think you can do that, right? So like you start to focus on yourself and then you recognize, I think it's useful to have conversations with people. So like, if you think about who are the people that are relying on you right now, just start by like picking two or three of them and then like having conversations with them and say like, Hey, I'm going through some stuff right now. I really want to be able to support you, but I may not be quite as available as I used to be. Could you have a conversation like that? Uh, sure, but uh, I, I think, like, you gotta, like, go through, like, some sort of, like, realization of what you want to achieve before you do that, but that's just me. Well, there's like, your problem. So I don't think you, no, you don't have to go through any realization of what you need to achieve before you start setting boundaries with people who are emotionally dependent on you. You don't need to do that. Like, I understand that you sure, feel okay. you need to do that, but, like, do you see how that's the, pro- like, how much you support, like, so I think... Dude, I think the problem is that you spend so much of your time supporting other people that you never give yourself the time or space to figure out what you want to achieve. You've got it backwards. What do you think about uh, that? Yeah, it's like the whole meditation thing really like resonated that what you did with the Melina. So uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Agree yeah, with so that the first, th- yeah, go ahead, sorry. Uh, I'm done, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so the first thing is that you've got to like, like set aside some time for yourself, even if you don't, even if it's a waste of time, right? Because you probably feel guilty if you're like, okay, why am I not emotionally supporting this person if I'm like not working towards anything? Do you have those kinds of thoughts? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah. So you got to let yourself think that because you, you have, what you're working towards is figuring out what you're working towards. And you can't do that if you're consumed by helping other people, right? Like, here's the problem. You play RPGs? Uh, sure. Okay. So like the problem here is that you help, you spend all of your mana, like healing other people, 
And then when it comes to like self-development, you're um. Right? So it starts by like reserving some of your mana pool for yourself. And then letting people know that like, hey, I can't answer my phone every time you call. I'm working on a couple of things and I'll like call you back at like within an hour or two. Or shoot me a text if you need to talk like right now, right now. Uh, I, I guess I never thought about those things because when you're like so far deep in, you, you know, you don't like really raise the question. Absolutely. You are 100% correct. The deeper in you are, the harder it is to see. Right? So this is where you've got to take a step back and try to set some, set some boundaries which are going to feel awkward, but have a conversation about it and be like, hey, I want to continue to support you but I'm working on a couple of things. Is it okay if we like, like I'm a big fan of scheduling because scheduling lets people know that they're a priority. Like when I come to someone and I say that I am taking time out of my day to be available for you, it's hard for people to feel like you don't care about them. And more importantly, it's hard for you to feel like you don't care about them. Got it? Uh, yep. Okay. Other questions? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Big fan of okay. Good, good luck, man. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's do one more. All right. Uh, the person's mic isn't working, so I'm just going to ask it for him. Sure. Um, essentially, is like being a sponge and ego, are they tied together because both want to make like other people happy? Ego doesn't want to make other people happy. So they can be tied together. But let's let's start by understanding this. Ego doesn't want to make other ha people happy. Ego wants to make yourself feel better. So if we look at Melina, I think Melina's ego is actually quite active. So she doesn't come across as egotistical. But I think her ego is quite strong. And we see her ego because she doesn't view herself as a selfish person. Right? So like her ego is about being this like self selfless, loving, caring, want to make the world a better place. And it's not that she's, that's false. It's just the ego kind of takes one part, a one real part of us, and then like uses that to like shut down everything else. So if we think about, you know, let's say like a League of Legends or Dota player who feels really, really like they're good at those games... And so their identity revolves around that. Like people who are doctors have their identity revolve around the, the doctor. So our ego tends to build on the things about us that are true and positive. And in doing so, it like shoves away a lot of negative and darker stuff that then becomes hard to work on. So the sponge and the ego can become related because you can start to develop an ego around being a sponge. Oh, look at how helpful I am. Look at how wonderful I am. Look at how much I want the world to be a good place. All of these other people are selfish, but I am selfless. I'm a good person, and I want everyone to be happy. And I'm willing to sacrifice myself to other people. And then when you try to tell that person, oh, maybe you should try being a little bit more selfish, their ego rebels against that. Because if they derive their value from being a selfless person, and you threaten to take that away, then who are they? They're no one. Does that make sense? Yeah, he said that answered the question. And he also says that he loves you. Wow. Okay, well, I love him too. But not in a polyamorous open relationship kind of way. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks a lot. No problem. Okay. Uh, 